So in section 1.3, we're going to look at some frequency distributions here and levels of measurement. So there are quantitative and qualitative data, and they break up into some nominal, ordinal, interval, and racial scales here. So let's look first at the qualitative data. And there's two kinds. The first one is nominal level of measurements. And so this is categorical. And the categories don't have any order. So one is not worth more than the other. So like ethnicity or yes, no, undecided, things like of that nature, favorite color, uh, where you can't say blue is worth more than red. which is all equal. But you could also have qualitative data that is um, organizable. So there's a hierarchy on there. So for example, grades. An A is worth more than a B. A B is worth more than a C. Uh, in the military, perhaps um, uh, ranks, private, sergeant, captain, you could put them in, in ascending or descending order there. Quantitative data also has two groups. The first one is uh, interval. And interval is where there is no actual zero. Zero is more of a placeholder. So for example, if it's zero degrees outside, that doesn't mean there's no temperature. Um, it's, it's pretty cold if it's zero degrees outside. At the year zero, that doesn't mean there wasn't any time. It, again, it's just a placeholder for that. So that's what we call interval. Racial has to do where zero actually means the absence of. And with ratio, we're actually able to do mathematics uh, pretty uh, accurately like we do. So if we say a textbook costs zero dollars, that means it doesn't cost anything. If you have zero dollars in your pocket, that means you have no money, the absence of money there. And if we're comparing a book that costs $100 to $50, well, it's twice as much. So if we're looking at temperature, 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Fahrenheit doesn't, doesn't mean it's twice as hot. It doesn't actually work out that way. So uh, interval uh, has no true zero or ratio has an actual zero, means the absence of. So let's look at a frequency uh, distribution here, what's sometimes called a frequency table here to organize some data. And so let's say we have 20 students and we're asking them how many hours they work today and these are the results we got. So we got a survey. Now this is what we call raw data. It's a little messy, a little kind of just rough to look at. We want to organize this. One way to do it is to kind of put in a table here. And so that's what's done here. So if we're looking at uh, the data value of 2, that means as we go through our data, 1, 2, 3 students actually got that specific data value. So the frequency is a count, how many actually had it there. And so we could go through all our data. Same thing if we go to three. Well, how many threes are there? There is one, two, three, four, five. There we go. So that's where we're getting that five from. Now, I always like to, uh, there's some other things we could do here. We could look at relative frequency. And so what we want to do is let's go ahead and look at the total. So we know there's 20 students, but you could add those up there. So relative frequency is going to kind of turn this into a, a proportion and then ultimately into um, a, a decimal value or a probability. So for that first group, we have 3 out of 20, which gives you 0.15. And we could do this for all of these groups here. So 5 out of 20, 3 out of 20, and all the way down. And so we're going to go ahead and turn all of those into these uh, proportions. And then uh, technically, the relative frequency wants that uh, probability there. So we'll use the decimal form. 
And another thing we uh, like to do here is we could extend this out and talk about the cumulative relative frequency. So cumulative means uh, we keep adding on to it. So number of units you've taken uh, from when you started college, you add up every semester's worth of units up until this point here. So for this first group, we're just going to take that value of 0.15. Now for the second group here, we're going to take what we had before. So we're going to take that 0.15 here and we're going to add it to this 0.25. So everything below that. And for the next group, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and get 0 0.40, which we know that equals to point, um, uh, 40 here and we're going to add this one so everything all the way down there so we're accumulating all of that and that's going to give us 0.55 and we're going to go ahead and do that for each of these groups here so what we had before plus that category and it should add up to about one and i say about one because sometimes because of rounding error you might get 0 0.99 or 1.01 .01. so as long as it's around one uh it probably did your calculations correct there.